Hello, PDA supporters and progressive friends. I'm Bill Bianchi with Progressive Democrats of America, and I'm here at uh, the South Chicago Mexican American Club on East 92nd Street, and we're going to be talking with members of CORE, the caucus of rank-and-file educators who are holding their pre-election fundraiser. Just three years ago, CORE won the election for leadership of the Chicago Teachers Union. And soon they'll have to defend that leadership again in an election coming up soon. So we're going to talk with several people, uh, CORE members, to learn more about the election, what's at issue, and how CORE plans to win. And we're going to start with Michael Brunson. Brunson yes. Thank you. Michael, why don't you start by telling us what your role at CORE is and the, at the CTU. Right now at CORE, uh, during the election time, I'm back on the steering committee. I'm a longtime member of CORE. I've been a member of CORE, oh, let's say about four years now. You know, since shortly after its inception. And uh, I am currently the recording secretary of the Chicago Teachers Union. Okay, very good. And what's your background in teaching? Elementary school teacher. Well, what a ride it's been, huh? In the just three years, CORE has led the CTU in a successful strike that uh, really renewed hope among progressives around the country uh, by showing that uh, uh, labor had some fight left in it and uh, for uh, the rights of workers and also for, for uh, public education. And CTU continues to lead a struggle for uh, public education. What do you think has been the union's most important accomplishment in, the th in these three years? We've changed the we change the dialogue a bit because you know there's been a lot of teacher bashing it's been accumulating over the many years and one of the things that we did when we came into the union when we came into leadership of the union a number of things but we made it a bit more uh, militant because we knew we were in pretty much a war against not only education but against labor and a great part of this war on education and labor and teachers has to do with the media image. So we knew we had to put the right media image out there for educators, teachers, paraprofessionals, clinicians, everyone that works in, in the schools. And we found we must have been doing something right because when it came time for the strike and they polled the public sentiment, the public was on the side of the teachers. Mm, okay. Well, uh, what is there in, in CORE's style of leadership that differs from previous uh, leaders in the union? Democracy. Democracy. We're very, we are a member-driven union, and we, meet, we believe deeply in democracy. Our meetings are run like that. Um, when we, also, when we were at the bargaining table, we brought in a more inclusive means of addressing the contract issues. We, we did not just have the small bargaining team of the officers and the attorneys. We had about 35 people that we brought in from the various, from the uh, high school, um, elementary schools, special education teachers, PSRPs. We tried to be as inclusive as possible when we sat there at the bargaining table. So we had this, you know, we had two teams, we had a, a, a tight bargaining team, and then we had the broader bargaining team that was there to support us and um, give their ideas on how this new contract should be formed. And this was uh, notably different from past uh, administration? I don't think it's ever been done, not that I know of. And um, you better believe that the other side was not very happy you know, when they found out how we wanted to go about bargaining. Uh, this whole thing of having a larger, more inclusive team working with us, I think to them it was unheard of. Great. Well, how did the core form? It uh, has a kind of an interesting background, I think, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct about that. Core started, now I wasn't there from the very, very beginning, so I, but I know that we started as a, um, a group of educational workers, mostly teachers, that were interested in um, reading and discussing books. That's what we do. We're teachers, right? So it started almost, you can say, as a, uh, a book club. 
Oh, really? All right, and it's gone on from there. What, what, what now, as you look ahead, what is the main challenge well, ahead for Florida? I, I don't want to just say that it was just that. It was brought together. That was the conceptual side that brought us together. Also, at the at the beginning, you know, we came in, stepped into the middle of all of the school closings that were going on, and uh, there were a number of us, uh, I say, people that worked in education, that were unhappy with the fact that you had these school closings going on, and there was no real pushback. So, on the other side. We weren't just reading, there was the activist uh, part from the very beginning of standing no, up no against No pushback the from the, the union there at that no time. There was no pushback from the previous administration that we knew, knew of, or very little. And your um, book discussion group gave you a chance to talk about these things. And it gave us a, a, a chance to put things in a broader context, you know, to contextualize what was really going on and uh, get a fresh perspective on this so-called education reform. In regard to the union elections, what can you tell us about the opposition caucus? I, you know, I don't have a lot to say about the opposition. You know, I just think that the direction that we have taken the union in is a direction that our members want to go. And it seems as though the opposition wants to go back to what was being done, you know, business as usual, I guess you can call it, what was being done in the past. And you simply cannot go back to that. We have to realize that public education is under attack, labor is under attack, uh, all public things are under attack. And we what signs do you see that, that teachers support your approach? This is a sign right here. We have a lot of people here. That's true. Um, polls show that uh, our members are on our side. Uh, when we're out in public, uh, and when we speak to our members, they seem to be pleased with the direction that we're going into, going in. Now, of course, you can't please all of the people all of the time. But we seem to have a consensus of members moving in this, that are happy with the work that we're doing. Okay. What do you think will make the key difference in this election, this union election? The message. The, whether or not this union is going to move forward and address this so-called school reform movement, which is really an attempt to dismantle the public school system and the um, professionalism of the people that work in them and the unions that protect them. Whether or not we're going to be able to have, you know, to have someone lead in this battle or someone that's just going to try to turn back the clock and do things the old way. Okay, well it sounds like the, the party is just beginning to get it heated up. Uh, how about your final uh, message to the teachers of Chicago? Go for it. Go for I'm sure you like the way things are going. Let's keep moving in that direction. Thank you very much, Michael. I uh, appreciate the time you've given us. Okay.